Okay, everybody, thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome to Science Center 101. Um, just a bit of housekeeping before we begin. Firstly, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to fill out the pre-registration survey, and it's been really interesting to read your results. If anybody has any questions, please type them into the chat pane, and a colleague of mine will reply as soon as possible. So today we're going to begin by looking at some of the inherent problems around taking notes in traditional methods, such as by typing or writing, as I can see from the pre-survey questions, there is a mixed response as usual. <clears throat> and then we're going to look at how to combat these using audio note taker. So it really comes down to speed, and humans speak at between 100 to 125 words per minute when presenting, on the lower end of the scale, and on the higher end of the scale up to 250 words per minute, and the fastest speaking pulse debaters up to 500 words per minute, which is obscenely quick. So, shorthand is learned to average out at 110 words per minute, and typically studies have shown that first year students capture information at around 100 words per minute. So Barbara Blackburn was the fastest alphanumerical English language typist in the world, and her top speed was 212 words per minute, which I believe she maintained for around 72 seconds. And one of the issues we all have is that we're not Barbara Blackburn. So studies have shown that typically you'll capture between 11 to 70% of the key information presented in a lecture, or another way to look at that is you'll typically miss out on 30 to 89% of the information presented. So the best case scenario is capturing 70 words out of every 100 spoken, and that's at the slowest speaking speed and fastest writing pace. And the worst case scenario is capturing 28 words out of every 250 spoken at the slowest writing speed and fastest speaking pace. So as with everything, the accurate number of that will, for you will be somewhere in the middle of these two scenarios if you are taking your notes by handwriting. So still, it's a lot of information to miss. So what do we do? The simple answer is to record. It allows you to capture 100% of the information and means you don't miss out on anything. So today, I'm going to take you through how to use Audio Note Taker. I'll take you through the basic settings, how to record and make it meaningful by annotating that audio, what to do when you come to review it, and then how to engage with it further to help you study. So for those of you who struggle to capture all the information in class, this will be particularly useful, but also we will look at the summarizing aspects and organizing the information as it's delivered. So I'm just going to come out of this PowerPoint now and jump up into Audio Note Taker. But before I begin, I'm just going to launch a quick poll as it'd be really interesting to hear from you guys if you've ever had poor notes have a direct impact on your midterm or exam results. So initially, what you'll want to do is navigate from the home screen to the settings, which is just on the bottom left of the left-hand options. Here you can amend the appearance of the software, so if you click on theme, you can then change from the Sonocent default theme to a few other presets, or you can select custom. Here you can change your default font, the text color, and the text size, and also the background color, chunk colors, and so forth. You can also amend the size of the chunks themselves and the spacing from the spacing, um, the chunk sizes tab, sorry. And once you've finished changing the options, if you click Apply and then OK, that will save those options as your defaults for the next time you use the software. So with note taking, when you go into a new project on the top left, and just select a blank project before you go into class. Now, if you have access to a PowerPoint slide ahead of the class, you can bring these in by right-clicking in the Images pane and then selecting Import Slides or PDF. All you have to do is double-click, and that will bring the slides in and lay them down the screen in a linear fashion. So you'll initially have the Images pane, the Text pane, and the Audio pane visible. And then down here on the bottom left, you can view or hide these panes and bring in a fourth pane, the Reference pane. So today, I'll use all four. However, feel free to use whichever ones you want to work in. Now, 
in the reference pane. You can type notes if you wish, or you can use it to pull the text out of the PowerPoint into your preferred font, font size, font color, by selecting Extract Text from All Slides in the Text Toolbar, which will appear whenever you are in a text pane, which is the reference or text. When you've selected this, that will pull the text out into clear text format, and you can begin to highlight things you want to listen out for. So just by highlighting the audio, oh sorry, highlighting the text and then selecting the colour from the text toolbar, toolbar, that will then give you a visual prompt for things you might want to listen out for during the class. And then when the lecture begins and your professor begins to speak, just simply click record. So using audio note taker is about organising the information as it's delivered and keeping it in the same form it's delivered, which is audio. So all you have to do is look and you'll see that we the software sorry, is creating chunks and a chunk is essentially a small visual representation of a spoken phrase or sentence. So there's a gap now in between the professor's voice as it were here and now you can begin to highlight those points of information as they're delivered. So all you have to do is click on the right hand side toolbar and that will highlight particular pieces of audio using your selected colour or you can work with the hotkeys as well, so 1 to 5 down the side, and if there's something you don't quite understand and you want to come back to, you can just press number 2, and that will highlight that particular piece of audio blue for review. Now, you can create your own colour keys as well, just click Edit Colour Key, Add, and then create as many as you would like, and they'll appear here in this drop-down menu. Now, when your professor moves slides, just simply press Enter, and that will begin recording next to the next slide. Now, you can type text if you wish, so all you have to do whilst you're in the audio pane is start typing, and it will jump to the text pane. And then if you press enter, it will jump back into the audio pane to allow you to colour key using the hotkeys or by clicking up here in the chunk colouring. But if you start typing again, it will jump into the text pane and create a new line so it works exactly like you'd expect the enter key to, just meaning you can navigate easily between the audio and text. So that is all you have to do to capture the lecture and to annotate the audio as it's been delivered. It's just about creating sections and colour coding smaller bits of information for you to come back and revise from. Now for those of you who may have classes that aren't so heavy into PowerPoint, and more so into work on the board, I'm going to show you how to use the app to capture that as well, and we'll come back at looking at reviewing the project from there. So I'm just going to share my screen of this iPad, hopefully. Okay, and then this is the app, the Sonocent Recorder. Um, it's available on Android and iOS, um, so you can download that um, from their respective app stores. So all you'll have to do, if you've used the app previously, you'll have a list of your projects. And if it's the first time you've used it to create a project, just click record. And it works in exactly the same way as the software. It captures the audio and visualizes it. And then you can click down here to highlight those particular points of information. Now, if you want to type notes, just tap where it says ABC and type. And if you want to create a section, so if you want to follow along with a topic change or a PowerPoint slide, if you are using the app, just click this arrow jumping over a line in the top right, and that will create a new section. Also, to create a new section, you can press the camera down here at the bottom left and take an image of something on the board, and then use that photo, and that will be aligned to that specific section. And every subsequent photo you take then, will create a new section with that image um, being displayed in the software afterwards when you bring in the project. Now, where the app also has its strength is in its simplicity. So there is a glance mode or a distraction-free mode, which is down here on the bottom right corner. If you select this, it gives you a completely blank screen, and all you have to do is tap once, and it will create a section, or double tap to color code the audio working in only one color. And as you see, when I click back, 
I've got those section breaks and colour coding in place whilst just having a discrete way to capture the class. So I'll stop that there. Now when you've finished recording the class, if you just select close from the top left corner, it will prompt you to enter a title, a topic and a speaker. And I would recommend doing so to make your files easier to navigate in the future. And then click save. Once you've done that, you have a few options for bringing the file into the desktop program to begin working with it and revising from it. So if you are at, on the university network, there may be certain privacy restrictions in place which prohibit you sharing via Wi-Fi. But if you select the I next to the file and then click share, you will have any options um, that you have on both devices. So if that's cloud-based storage, you could use Dropbox, Drive, Box, or you can email it to yourself as well. And then you can get that file via that way. Um, and if you are at home on a private network, you can just click transfer, and the app will give you a four-digit code. So I'll stop sharing the screen there, and I'll just show you the remainder of that process. So to bring it in, all you have to do is load up all your note taker, go to the home tab and select transfer and then transfer from the Sonosum recorder. Now it will ask you if you are on the same Wi-Fi network across both devices and if you are just click OK. From there you'll be able to select the device you wish to copy the file from and enter the four digit code it presents. And now you'll have all those files. So you can choose to copy one across and just copy the selected or copy them all across. You can then choose to delete them from the mobile device after copying or keep them by unchecking this box. So I'll just bring this one I've created across and that will appear then in my All Projects tab. <coughs> so once that's loaded up, you can just double click and open up that file and as you'll see, even with my terrible photography, you still got the image from whatever was on the board in class, any text notes you've typed, and then the audio is organized as it's been delivered into colored chunks and sections. So very similar to the PowerPoint class, just a different way of getting there. Now, before we look at reviewing the project, I'm just going to launch a quick poll because it'd be really great to hear if any what the number one issue you guys have had with note-taking class has been. So you'd have something that looks like this after class, but with a bit more audio. Now, when you come to play it back, if you have a professor who speaks too quickly, you can slow down the speed of playback up here next to this stopwatch. And equally, if it's too slow, you can speed it up. Now, when you come to review, you can just place the cursor at the beginning of the project and press play. You can navigate to where you've highlighted the audio and press play there or you can begin to synthesize re resources from this. So if you select extract and extract audio, you can then pull that across into a new file. So you'll always maintain your original file of the class recording with the full lecture, but you'll have slimmed it down into just the say, important information you want to review or any of the assigned values you've put to the colors. So even with class content being difficult to understand, you have it in the same format it's been delivered in which it's audio and you can listen back to just those bits that you want to listen to or that have to listen to to revise. Um, from there, um, for those of you who find summarizing your notes difficult, uh, this is what you can also do at this stage. So what you've got here is the important information as it's been delivered from the class and maybe a link to some text from a PowerPoint slide and a couple of notes you've added. From here, if you press enter, as long as you have audio in the first section and the second, you'll create a section in the middle, which you can then use as a summary section. So you have a few options for getting that summary into there. You can just press record and record yourself summarizing what you've learned from the first topic covered, the second topic covered, or the first slide and second slide, and so on and so on. So if you create a section after every one of that, you'll have your own audio summaries to revise from. If not, you can go to the text pane and types, type your summary in there. You can also use Mac Dictate or Windows Speech Recognition to dictate directly into the text pane, though they may need some training beforehand. 
and that will then allow you to have a summary in your own words from what you've learned and you can even begin to colour code your summary to parts of the audio and the text as well. So that is using Audio Note Taker to work in the class and then what you do slightly after. And once you've finished extracting the audio, you can then export that into a few different outputs. So if you select export from the top of the screen, you can take it as an audio album, as an iTunes album, which will keep all of the different images and text within the project into the iTunes album itself, which would be entitled the title of your project. You can then export the audio and images as a video, so have the PowerPoint slides and the audio to watch back, or take any of your text notes as a Word document by taking the text and images. So that's the export options. Now when you've finished class, you'll always want to give your project a title, a topic and a speaker to make it easier to search. And I'll just quickly show you how to search within your projects to create your own revision list. So here you have the find function. If you can search for a specific example of a word within a project, which is great. Um, or from the home tab, if you select open project and search projects, you can then search by a topic, by a speaker. So it means you can find all of your professor's classes or all of the specific topics that have been covered that may be on an exam. You can also search for specific examples of words within all your projects. So to create a revision list, um, you can search for a specific, a specific example of a word. So if I search for T, you can then see every project that has ever had the mention of a word T in it. Essentially creating a revision list for the T exam all UK people have to go through. And that is just why it's important to save your projects so you can search your names and find it easily towards the end. So that is a quick run through of how to use audio note taker for note taking class. You will receive a short survey afterwards. If you wouldn't mind filling that in, it'd be great to hear your feedback and also to dictate more study skills we'll cover in Sonocent 201s, 202s as this is just scratching the surface of what you can do with the software. Um, now, thank you for joining me today, and if you have no questions, please feel free to go and enjoy the rest of your day, um, and if you do have any questions, please feel free to type those in, and I'll answer those as soon as possible.